So I've done a few three watch collection videos here on the channel. Today I have Panerai to show you guys. This is my three watch collection of Panerai. I've been collecting Panerai for many years. I've bought and sold dozens of Panerais. Uh, currently these are three that I have in my collection. I have others. Uh, however, these are three of my favorite and sort of a three watch collection. Uh, and like I said, I've done this for other brands. Uh, I really do love Panerai. I love their history. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief synopsis of their history. I'm going to talk about the brand in general and why I like them. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about these three watches right here. So we all know the three major names in dive watches. In 1953, we got the 50 Fathoms, often credited as being the first true dive watch, a true icon, and also a personal grail watch of mine. Then there was the Submariner, arguably the most popular dive watch of all time. It was released the same year as that 50 Fathoms in 1953. However, it was not officially launched until 1954. Last but not least, we have the bargain of this trio of divers. That was the Zodiac Seawolf, or is the Zodiac Seawolf, also released in 1953. This lesser known diver, although popular, never got the notoriety of the other two. However, did you know that Panerai have been making watches specifically made for underwater use for many, many years before the other three that I just mentioned. Panerai, the maker of big, bold dive watches that we know today actually has a very deep and rich history of making very big, bold dive watches. In fact, if we go back all the way to 1936, we will see the first Radiomir prototype, the reference 3533. The Radimir got its name from the radium paste used on the dial for the loom, and it was a key element in Panerai's production. The Radimir was extremely innovative, made on a base movement supplied by Rolex and modified by Panerai. So basically, they used a Rolex pocket watch movement inside of their watches. Back then, a large purpose-built 47 millimeter case and crown, also made by Rolex, were large for visibility purposes, not for aesthetics. So we're talking about a watch that was essentially a Rolex. It had a Rolex case, a Rolex crown, and a Rolex movement. It was all modified by Panerai themselves. However, this was a 47 millimeter case. It was purpose built. Fast forward to 1956 and we get the first Luminor style case known as the Egyptian, a 60 millimeter wide case with a graduated rotating bezel to calculate dive time and a Swiss made angulus movement. So this was a caliber that had an eight day power reserve. This was a large dive watch. It was a tool watch. It was a purpose built watch made for visibility and functionality. And that was it. It was a tool. It was an instrument made for keeping divers safe. And the reason why these cases were so big, it was because it was easier to see underwater. That radiomere, that, that radium loom that they actually used was visible. It was visible in the dark and it was visible underwater. That was the only reason why it was being used. These were purpose built tool watches. So getting into the three watches that we have here before you today. I have three watches here that I think are really awesome. I'm gonna start with my favorite. That is the Carbotech. The Carbotech is one of the coolest watches that Panerai make. It is a carbon fiber case. It has an in-house 9010 series movement is their thinner automatic movement, just a running seconds and a Carbotech case. That's that watch right there. This is the PAM 661. Then we're gonna look at the PAM 296, all titanium case, all titanium bracelet. This gets an ETA movement. It is a Valju 7750. We'll come back to that watch in just a minute as well. Really an awesome watch. A watch that I've worn every day for many, many years, and you're going to see that on the case and the bracelet of this watch. It is pretty much scratched to hell, but I love this watch. Again, a very reliable 300 meter tool watch. Another 300 meter tool watch right here. Then we're going to look at the PAM 580. This is a flyback chronograph with a central chronograph setup. So you have a central chronograph second, minute hand right there. There's a blue and a silver uh, second hand sort of, looks like a second hand right there at, at the uh, 12 o'clock that's pointing to the 12 o'clock. Then you have a running seconds there at the nine o'clock and you get two pushers. The entire case is made out of 
uh, ceramic, and then you get a see-through case back where you can see the column wheel chronograph. Uh, a little bit of a trick functionality with this watch as well, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, and we're gonna start with the Carbotech. I'm gonna show you these on my wrist. Uh, before I throw it on my wrist, let me show you the watch I am wearing today. I am wearing a Waltham. This is uh, going back to those original three dive watches. This was made by Blancpain. This is a 50 Fathoms Bothoskoff. Um, it was a private label, so it was essentially the exact same watch that they just relabeled as Waltham. Uh, so it's the exact same watch, has a friction fitted bi directional bezel, um, and it works really, really well. It looks great, it's in great condition. Uh, this is from the 1960s, just a really cool dive watch. Uh, or skin diver, I guess. Uh, I don't think I would ever go diving with that right now. So here is the Carbotech on my wrist. It is a 44 millimeter watch. I'll do some other measurements on it once I get it off my wrist, but I have it on an Alpha strap. Now, uh, this is an aftermarket strap that uh, was sent to me by Alpha Straps, and it is a really beautiful uh, distressed leather strap. I think these cost around $100, $119, something like that. You can get 10% off if you actually uh, use a discount code when you sign up with your email. Um, really a beautiful, beautiful strap. Uh, and it comes with this buckle as well. So this is not the original buckle. I usually actually have this watch on a Velcro strap, and I threw it on here just to show you this strap. Uh, cream colored uh, stitching that meet, matches the um, cream colored loom on the dial here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful dial, beautiful cream colored loom with that rose gold, those rose gold indices and hands. Um, this is just a time only. Like I said, it is Carbotech. So you get Carbotech uh, on the bezel, the case, and then the crown and crown protector are all made with Carbotech. The back of the watch is actually made in titanium. Now I give Panerai a pass for being a large watch. I don't wa really buy watches over 44 millimeters anymore. Uh, however, I think that Panerai look good on your wrist at this size. It's the case design, the lug design. Um, it makes a lot of sense. It doesn't make sense with a lot of other watches that just do it for the sake of being big. This is history, and the reason why these are big is because of history. Um, that's really it, what it comes down to. And I think they do look good on a, I have a seven and a half inch wrist and I think this watch looks good. Um, so I said this has the thinner movement. However, it's really not a thin watch. It's still 14.3 millimeters. That's including a dome sapphire crystal, but there you go. Um, and then the lug to lug is about uh, 55 millimeters, somewhere around there. It's a 44 millimeter watch. It measures just about 44 millimeters. It's much bigger with that crown protector. It's like 52 millimeters, somewhere around there. So uh, there there you go. I mean, you either love it or hate it. Uh, titanium case back, it is not see-through. I believe this is limited edition of 500 pieces. Uh, a little cool party trick that this watch does. So when you take out the crown protector there, just like that, um, you just have a little lever that just sort of uh, pulls out. When you put it into the date position, as you can see, it still is ticking along. It is not hacking in this position. It is a hacking watch. I'll show you that in a second. But the little option that you have here is for a traveler, sort of like a GMT, you have an independently operating hour hand. And you do not need to hack the movement. So if you do want to change the minutes, it will hack. So when you pull it out to the second position, now it will hack. So you can control the date and the hour hand from the first position, and then from the second position, you get a hacking function, and then, of course, you can operate that second hand. Pretty cool functionality on this watch, um, and just a very light watch as well. Beautiful, uh, beautiful case, everything about it. Carbotech is really nice. Uh, this, I think, retailed for around $12,000. These sell for around ten dollars to $11,000 even used, um, and there's a reason for that because they're actually very popular. Carbotech is really nice, um, and, and they did a really good job. When they first came out, they were actually selling over asking price. Uh, now they're you know back down to earth. Here's the second watch in this sort of watch collection. So this is the PAM, so the Carbotech is actually the PAM 661. This is the PAM 296. It is in full titanium. This gets a Valju 7750 movement inside. So essentially what Panerai do is they take a Valju 7750, they make it time only, and you just get a running seconds there at the nine o'clock. Uh, Cyclops on the inside, on the underside of the dome sapphire crystal, and date, and time only. That's it. It does not get that 
uh, sort of jumping our hand like the other uh, watches in this collection will have. Uh, that's because it is a value movement, but they do heavily modify it uh, for this watch. And this I think retailed for around $9,000 and these sell for around seven or $8,000 currently uh, if you are looking to buy one used because they currently don't make these. I think this was a limited edition of 500 again um, and it is really scratched up. You could see my bracelet is very scratched up. There's scratches on the case. I, I think I've even actually managed to scratch uh, part of the sapphire crystal because I really hit this hard one time. Uh, and it, it took a very, very big beating. Uh, I've never serviced this watch and I've had it for, I think around eight years, somewhere around there, eight or nine years at least. Uh, never serviced it. I think I wore it probably uh, for about two or three years straight when I first got it. Um, and then uh, I, you know, I started wearing other watches, but literally when I got this watch, I wore it for two or three years straight, never serviced it once and it works really nicely. So again, 44 millimeter case, Looks pretty much the same as the other case. That was a 1950 case, that's what they call it. Uh, this is just a Luminor Marina case. They're more modern case. This is the one that, you know, Sylvester Stallone sort of made popular, 16.2 millimeters uh, thick. And uh, and then the lug width, you do get male end links on here, so the lug width is pretty large. Um, 61 millimeters, however, at the case, and these look great on straps, 53 millimeters. Uh, 44 millimeter case. So as I mentioned, uh, Sylvester Stallone, who was doing Daylight, the movie Daylight in, I think it was Milan, or, or excuse me, in Florence, where uh, Pat and I are actually based. It was Florence. And uh, I think he was filming there, or he was doing something there, or uh, something like that. I don't know the entire story, but he went into Panerai. He bought a bunch of Panerai. They actually put Slytech on the dial. He gave them to a bunch of his friends in Hollywood. Uh, he wore one in the movie Daylight. That was the Panerai chronograph that he wore. Um, so he actually helped Panerai sort of make a comeback. And here you go. So this was not obviously one of those is a much later model. I uh, had one of those earlier models, not, not a Slytech obviously, but I actually bought and sold that a long time ago and I kicked myself today. Um, just a beautiful bracelet on this watch. One of the nicest. Um, and it is screwed links, of course, which is pretty cool from a major brand that uh, a lot of major brands sort of uh, don't do that. So here is the last watch of this collection. And you can see this is a chronograph. As I mentioned, you get the pushers on the left side of the case. And I started the chronograph there. And you can see that second hand ticking along. And now there is a another hand. It's not a second hand. That's the minute hand. Uh, in that silver tone there at the uh, at the 12 o'clock. And when we hit a minute, I'm sorry, I just wanted to wipe that off really quickly. When we hit a minute, that's actually going to move forward one minute. Um, and then you have a running seconds there at the nine o'clock. Now this is an all ceramic case. So you're getting a ceramic case, bezel, even the crown and the crown protector are in uh, ceramic. The case back is I believe the case back itself is in titanium. It might be also in ceramic, I'm not entirely sure. Um, usually I think they do the case backs in titanium for weight purposes. Uh, and then you could see the movement here. It is a column wheel movement. This is the only one with the display case back that I own. Uh, actually, I think I own another one with a display case back, but that was an earlier hand wound movement. Um, darkened sapphire crystal in the back here. So you can see the, uh, the movement, it looks darkened. Um, just a really cool setup, beautiful movement on here. This is a thick watch. Now, uh, I believe this is around 16 millimeters or 18 millimeters thick, sorry. That is including the very dome sapphire crystal. However, you gotta say that is pretty big. Um, and here is the lug to lug, 46.6. So this is not a small watch. Again, a 1950s case, you could see that because it says registered trademark on the actual bezel. It's a callback to the 1950s uh, Luminor that they came out with. So it's a Luminor Panerai. This is a very different case, not a very different case. It's actually kind of similar to the uh, Luminor Marina case. So you could see them side by side there. Um, just a little bit different, not, not that much. It actually looks bigger than this watch. It isn't, it's exactly the same size. You just have those pushers on the side, uh, which add a little bit of girth to it. And then this is a flyback chronograph. So just stopping the chronograph, flyback, both second hands, both, I keep on calling second hands and both chronograph hands, fly back to the 12 o'clock. Um, and that's pretty much the, uh, the uh, point of that. Uh, you get the same functionality as that Carbotech. So when you go into the date position, because you have a date at the uh, three o'clock, you get an independently operating um, hour hand. 
And you can see we have not hacked. So the moment you pull it out, now watch that second hand, and uh, it's it's actually pretty cool. And maybe I, if I can, I'll do a close up of this of the video, but it's it's very hard. Um, but once I pull out the crown, you can see the second hand at nine o'clock flies to the uh, top position at the 60 second position, I guess you would call it, um, or the zero second position. And it just, it flies back to that position. Really cool. This gets a sandwich dial. This gets a printed dial. Uh, so there's a little bit of difference between the three. Also kind of cool because there's three different dials here. Uh, this is a printed and applied dial on the Carbotec. So uh, really, really cool, really beautiful watches. Uh, if you're into Panerai, these are pretty awesome Panerai. This retailed for around $16,000, $17,000. Uh, used currently, they sell for around $13,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. Again, I have this on an Alpha Strap. Uh, this is the buckle that the Alpha Strap actually came on. It's very similar to the buckle that the uh, the watch came with. I believe it was a titanium buckle on this watch. And uh, if you want to swap out the buckle, you can. It's very easy. It's actually screwed in on the uh, on this bracelet on this strap as well. So the Alpha Strap again. This is the exact same uh, sort of distressed leather. It has a grayish green tone. It looks amazing. Look at that. It looks amazing with this uh, black ceramic. A large watch. Very, very large. So this strap is like $119. Again, if you want to get that extra 10% off, you just sign up for um, your email and there you go. Look at that. That looks awesome. I think it really does look good on my wrist. Again, when you get a large watch with a traditional sort of case, not a cushion case, uh, that's in that 44 millimeter range, it looks like a dinner plate. These do not. Um, but they do wear big on your wrist. It's a very, very functional tool watch. And that black on the side, that dark gray black area on the side of the case really matches well with the, uh, with the case itself. On the, on the side of the strap, excuse me, matches really well with the case. Just a beautiful strap. Both of these straps are really, really beautiful. Um, definitely check out their uh, website. I'll put a uh, link to their website in the description below. Really quickly, what we're gonna do now is I'm going to charge these with, uh, with my UV charger, uh, and then we'll do a loom shot, check out the loom, and then wrap up the video. So a company based on loom, so started on loom, that was kind of the whole thing, Luminor, Radiomir, all of these were based in their pastes that they actually used on the dials, the names of these watches. Uh, so obviously have very good loom. The loom is very good on Panerai. Uh, they're not gonna blow away any sort of micro brand, but they do a very good job. Sandwich dial on the Pilot's watch. By the way, this is a 100 meter watch, so technically not a dive watch. The uh, the uh, Titanium and the, um, the Carbotec are 300 meter watches. Uh, so those are technically watches that you could use for diving. You do not get ratcheting bezels. If you want a ratcheting bezel, you have to go to the larger case that is 47 millimeters. However, I think they are now making them down to 40 millimeters or something like that. And that is the submersible. So uh, those are pretty awesome. I want to own a submersible. I have never owned a submersible. I will one day own one in my collection. Uh, I just don't want a 47 millimeter watch, even though I know it's true to that original. Uh, I just don't want a 47 millimeter watch. I want a 42 millimeter Panerai in my collection. Uh, I'll go with a 44 millimeter uh, version of the submersible. One day I will have one, uh, but you can see the loom hangs on pretty well here. I've included Panerai into many of my loom competitions and they do decently when compared to other brands, especially other major brands like Omega. They beat Omega out, they beat a few other brands. Um, Really nice. I, I think they do a very good job. The sandwich dial is hanging on the best because it's the most liberally applied with loom. Um, and then you get this guy right here with the actual uh, combination of a printed and uh, applied indices. So you're getting very good loom from those applied indices. The hands look pretty much all equal. Uh, anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I know this is kind of a weird video where I'm comparing, uh, well, I have a three watch collection. Technically I have a pilot's watch, uh, the Carbotec, which is kind of like the dive watch and this one on the bracelet, which I wear as a dress watch. I used to wear this to work um, for, like I said, three years straight, I wore it for every occasion, anything with a suit, it didn't make a difference. I wore this for three years straight. Um, and, and that's really, uh, really a testament to this watch. Uh, which I think is really a very good everyday watch. Uh, but tell me what you guys think in the comments below. What do you think of Panerai? I've kind of make the case for them on a regular basis with people. 
Um, I really don't need to because they are a very popular brand for very good reasons. Um, and, and like I said, one of my favorite brands of all time. Uh, but tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Watch Chris Blog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.